Our computers and phones and pretty much all of our devices have pin codes or passphrases or some security measure to get into those devices. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to put a passphrase um, on a USB, on an external drive. Um, whether that's avoiding incrimination from a three-letter agency or just hiding your stuff from your roommate, it doesn't really matter. Otherwise, I was just gonna talk about um, kind of a preface or a warning before we do this, because uh, if you actually plan on encrypting your hard drive, you're gonna be using some uh, kind of risky commands like that require sudo in Linux. Uh, there's this sudo super user do where you preface a command with that sudo lsblk list block devices um, where you're accessing some really low level hardware stuff that is usually really protected and you can't just have anybody uh, you know swinging around these commands and and access this kernel code and uh you know for example running f suck okay f s CK, that's file system check. Uh, that's gonna check your file system. It's gonna make sure everything's good to go, but it sounds harmless. But the reason that command requires sudo, that it requires these privileges is because if you run file system check on a mounted drive, like I accidentally did in the making of this video, uh, you'll see that you can easily corrupt your uh, files on your file system and so, you know, partition and block device, right? It's kind of these layers of, uh, how, what a storage device actually is. And you're gonna learn a lot, hopefully, in this video of how that stuff works. Um, I, I hope I explained some things pretty well as far as how a block like device, a literal file is represented in Linux um, to the partition that's built on top of it, to the file system built on top of it, and then the files and folders and everything uh, that you uh, have on top of it. Like I said, make sure you know what you're doing. The only solution to this, I think the easiest solution is just to make backups, not only to make backups of the, you know, USB or storage drive that you're encrypting, make backups of the sensitive data you want to, you know, store, but also make backups of, you know, the entire workstation or computer that you're encrypting it from. So not only the device, but the device you're encrypting it from, I recommend that you make backups. So I personally have like a terabyte uh, drive. I just have backups for all my stuff and I use rsync. That's uh, basically a copy tool, but it's more of an intelligent copy that syncs uh, files intelligently where it's not going to copy files redundantly. Like every time, if you have a script that rsyncs your personal computer every week, it's not going to like redundantly copy the entire batch every time. It's going to modify changes in a synchronized way per the name. So that's what I do. I use rsync um, and just make sure you know what these commands do, um, mostly, mostly file system check. You shouldn't really need that command, but I just ran it. Um, we will, you know, use uh, crypt setup, which is, you know, if you accidentally run that command, like on your, the actual block device of the device that you're on, rather than the block device of the external drive, you could encrypt your entire uh, workstation in an unintended way. So there are uh, consequences you should be aware of. So without further ado, let's actually get into it. Okay, this next part is optional, but I do highly recommend it. Um, if you're not going to be using like a virtual machine or some kind of containerized, not containerized, but virtualized technology where you don't run the risk of breaking anything, um, you can at least practice these commands using loop devices. Now, if you're on Linux, what I recommend you do is you just ls and then dev. That's your devices, right? Slash dev. Look at stuff in there and look at loop devices and see that these are basically kind of fake block devices pretending to be block devices. Um, and for the sake of this video, we can use them as kind of a testing ground to experiment uh, what it's like to encrypt a drive. When you plug in a USB, for example, um, what that's gonna appear as, because in Linux is kind of like this saying that everything is a file and it's true. If you plug in a USB, what it's gonna appear as is slash dev slash sda or sdb if it's the second one sdc if it's the third one and that single file um, is the block device which you would bu build a partition and then a file system on top of um, and the, the loop device that is also um, a file that's pretending to be a block device that you can use what you can do is run lo setup um, that's a loop device setup and that command 
will create a loop device. But first, you need to have a file large enough to actually be recognized. This file is going to be associated with a loop device. So basically, you use either two commands, dd, um, a lot of things it stands for a disk destroyer, people, you know, are kind of careful of it. Uh, so optionally, you can use this command f allocate, that's file allocate. There's really these two options. Either way, you're going to want to make a file that's, and it kind of depends. Uh, the lux2 format, there's two formats, right? How big do I want my file to be? I know my USB is going to be like at least 15 gigs, so that's big enough. But when we're practicing with the loop device, how big do I want it to be? I would say like 50 to 100 megabytes, honestly. It depends on what kind of file system you use. But the LUT, there's two options for crypt setup. This encryption stuff that we're going to do is LUX1 and LUX2. And they both have uh, file headers that are a certain size. This uh, file header on the block device contains all the encryption uh, parameters and keys and crazy cryptography stuff that have to store in a header that's a 4 megabytes in size of LUX1 and 16 megabytes in size of LUX2. And so keeping that in mind and then also uh, doing a bit of research on your own of how big does a file system or how big does a block device have to be um, in order to make a, an ext4 partition, uh, excuse me, file system or including a, a partition as well. But file systems, you know, ext4, xfs, they will have certain requirements as to like how big they have to be. So this loop device should be um, of that um, correct size. But either way, we're going to use dd or f allocate to actually make a loop device, which was going to pretend to be a block device by associating it with that loop device. Okay, so step number one, either use f allocate or dd, and I'm actually going to use both really quick. Okay, we're both going to specify the length and the location where it's going, and I'm just going to put it in TMP. And what I actually like to do is just quick compare DD and F allocate. So I'm just going to call this FLC so we know which command it came from. And then I'm going to run DD, disk destroyer. So we specify the input file. And that's going to be dev0. Dev0 is just an endless stream of null characters. It's a character device, kind of spits out serially um, characters endlessly. We're going to specify both the count and the byte size. So the count, how many do we want? We want 50, 50 of what? Megabytes. And then the output file is just going to be like where we actually put it. And that is going to be, well, let's call it dd.img. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is actually compare both of those, just to demonstrate. And you, oh. Bruh. Okay, my bad, yeah. And you can see they're the same there. Okay, the second step after you've made that file is to just make a loop device. How the loop devices are named is actually numbered. So I have a lot of loop devices, so I'll just name it loop9, and then we specify the file that we just made. So after we've done it correctly, we can use the A flag just to quickly list out which loop devices are associated with which files. And you can see here, using FLC, um, created from the FL allocate, optionally here we could uh, actually create partitions on top of one of these loop devices with F disk or parted. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just encrypt the entire block device. Okay, here we go. All capitals. All right, for passphrase, do anything you want. I'm going to make it easy. And it's going to take a minute to overwrite everything, create that 16 megabyte header, and there we go. Okay, so let's open it and decrypt it here. So you have to specify um, that block device and then name it basically whatever you want. Okay, so after you've opened and decrypted it, it will not only show up in LSBLK or listing block devices, um, and also notice we had 50 megabytes minus 16 is now 34 for that large header. Um, so not only will it show up there, but it will show up if you go to dev mapper 
and there she is. And if you go there, um, you will also see that it's associated with this other device that's you know one fo folder back. If you're curious how things work, that's uh, a link. Okay, so before you mount it and have access to it, we'll make a file system. And it all looks successful, so now we can finally mount it. Okay, nice. Now we can do LSBLK and actually see it's mounted correctly. Okay, so there you have it. If you'd like to kind of continue further and experiment and test with some creation of files and seeing if you can access them or not, uh, you will have to do it with root. Um, so you can either change the permissions or just be root and uh, touching and echoing um, different contents to you know, see if you can see that content or not, whether it's encrypted or not. Um, but either way, you won't get that GUI prompt. Um, that's really a Fedora thing at least, or a GNOME thing I should say. Um, when you actually do the real USB, um, it should be able to auto mount and uh, auto uh, decrypt and e encrypt in kind of an easy way from the file manager. So with that being said, that's all and thanks for watching. That sums up the video and thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe to support more content like this.